You already know plastic is polluting our oceans, but did you know it's also fueling climate change? From production to disposal, plastic has a hidden carbon cost most people overlook. In this video, we'll uncover the link between plastic waste and rising global temperatures. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content that reveals what really matters. 1. Plastic begins as fossil fuels. Plastics are made from natural gas, crude oil, and coal non-renewable fossil fuel resources. These fossil fuels are extracted through drilling, fracking, or mining all highly polluting methods. Extraction releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas that traps more heat than carbon dioxide. Once extracted, fossil fuels must be transported long distances, often via pipelines or ships. These transports can leak or spill, causing environmental damage and contributing to emissions. Next, fossil fuels are refined into petrochemicals through energy-intensive industrial processes. This releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere at every stage. Two, plastic manufacturing emits carbon. Turning fossil fuels into plastic products involves high heat, chemicals, and heavy machinery. Plastic manufacturing facilities burn massive amounts of energy, usually from fossil fuels. The process emits large quantities of carbon dioxide, sulfur oxides, and nitrous oxide gases. These greenhouse gases build up in the atmosphere, trapping heat and raising global temperatures. Just one plastic plant can emit as much carbon as 500,000 cars in a single year of operation. As demand for plastic rises, so do emissions from new and expanding petrochemical facilities. Most plastic factories are located near marginalized communities that suffer health burdens. Three, plastic waste creates more emissions. After use, plastic is either landfilled, burned, or leaks into the environment each route causes harm. Incinerating plastic is often called waste to energy, but really means burning fossil materials. This burning releases more carbon dioxide, black carbon, and toxic gases into the air we breathe. Land-filled plastic slowly breaks down and releases methane, a greenhouse gas 84 times stronger. Even recycling plastic causes emissions from collection, sorting, and reprocessing activities. Only about 9% of plastic ever gets recycled, and even that is not truly circular. Most recycled plastic is downcycled into lower quality materials that eventually become waste again. Four, microplastics affect climate systems. Tiny plastic particles known as microplastics are found in oceans, soil, and even the air we breathe. These particles come from clothing fibers, tires, packaging, and the breakdown of larger plastics. When microplastics float in the ocean, they affect plankton, which help regulate Earth's climate. Plankton absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and sink it to the ocean floor when they die. But microplastics damage plankton health, reducing their ability to store carbon effectively. This weakens the ocean's role as a carbon sink, which is vital for controlling global warming. Microplastics in soil also alter microbial activity, which affects how carbon is stored in the earth. Five, plastic and the climate budget. Scientists estimate that by 2050, plastic could account for 13% of our total carbon budget. The carbon budget is the amount of carbon dioxide we can emit before breaching 1.5 degrees C warming. Plastic's current trajectory is pushing us dangerously close to exceeding that climate threshold. Without major reductions in plastic production, other climate efforts may be rendered ineffective. Even if we clean up electricity and transport, rising plastic use could negate those gains. That is why the United Nations and climate scientists now include plastic in climate calculations. Cutting plastic is no longer optional. It is a critical step in reaching global climate targets. Six, plastic fuels climate injustice. Plastic factories are often built in low-income areas with little political or legal protection. These communities suffer higher pollution levels, illness rates, and climate-related risks. Many residents near petrochemical plants experience respiratory issues, cancer, and stress. Climate change worsens existing inequalities, especially where plastic pollution is highest. Flooding, heat waves, and droughts hit hardest in polluted, underfunded, and underserved areas. In many places, plastic waste is shipped overseas and burned in open pits or primitive incinerators. This exposes foreign workers and children to toxic fumes, cancer risks, and ecological collapse. Seven, plastic in the oceans harms carbon cycles. 
Oceans act as a global carbon sink, absorbing a quarter of the carbon dioxide we emit each year. But plastic waste is choking the ocean and harming the organisms that help regulate climate cycles. Seabirds, whales, and fish ingest plastic, disrupting marine food chains and carbon storage systems. Coral reefs and mangroves, which store massive carbon, are smothered by plastic debris and waste. When ocean ecosystems are degraded, their ability to trap and lock away carbon is reduced. The balance of life in the sea is essential to keeping atmospheric carbon levels under control. Plastic waste interferes with this natural carbon cycling by killing or displacing key species. Eight, plastic industry denies climate impact. Plastic companies often promote recycling to shift blame from production to consumer behavior. But they continue building massive new plants, knowing that demand for plastic is still rising. These expansions directly contradict global goals to reduce emissions and combat climate change. The plastic lobby spends millions to downplay environmental and climate concerns in legislation. They rebrand plastic as sustainable or renewable, using misleading marketing and loopholes. Many corporations use chemical recycling claims that emit more carbon than making virgin plastic. This creates the illusion of progress while emissions and pollution actually continue increasing. Nine, global plastic agreements are key. Individual efforts help, but solving plastic's climate role needs global coordination and law. The United Nations is negotiating a legally binding treaty to end plastic pollution worldwide. This treaty includes provisions to reduce plastic production, not just improve waste systems. It also considers climate impacts and how plastic emissions fit into international carbon goals. Countries must agree on fair rules that prevent pollution from shifting to poorer nations. The treaty's strength depends on political will, public pressure, and science-based targets. Climate activists, scientists, and vulnerable nations are calling for strong, enforceable action. 10. Your choices make a difference. Reducing plastic use in your life also helps fight climate change in real and measurable ways. Choosing reusables cuts demand, lowering emissions from extraction, production, and shipping. Supporting policies like bans or extended producer responsibility helps reshape entire systems. Voting for leaders who understand plastics' climate cost ensures stronger environmental laws. Demanding transparency from brands forces companies to clean up their supply chains and goals. Joining local cleanups, education, or advocacy builds public pressure and awareness for change. Reducing plastic also inspires others. It creates a cultural shift that multiplies climate action. Understanding the true cost of plastic is the first step to real change. Now that you know its role in climate change, how will you reduce your footprint? From smarter choices to sustainable habits, it starts with awareness. Don't forget to like this video, share it with someone who cares about the planet, and subscribe so you never miss another important breakdown.